exactly right. The atmosphere is incredible here. You could see Sean especially you, taking it the first frame. all in Sean as he Murphy walked down it. into the arena. Two ultimate professionals here going to battle it out. And when you get to the one table situation, Ken, that's what the game of snooker is all about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You live for it. Days like this and moments like this coming down into a packed auditorium. Great atmosphere. What a welcome both players got. It's going to be a fascinating match. Really looking forward to this one, Dennis. And it's going to be very tough to call between the bow players. There's not much between them. 11 wins each against each other. And look at that auditorium there. Isn't that fantastic? Great that we're still at the Barbican. A few years ago, it looked like we weren't going to be here anymore, but they decided to keep it. It was due to be knocked down. Oh, he was a mile out of the escape oh, there. Nice. Better missing it. Sean Murphy. Four. But I, I thought he'd have got a little closer than that. The last thing he wants to do, as Sean sits there, has it replaced, is to uh, hit it too thick. But yeah, York's a great John. part of the country to be in at this time of the year. It really is. That's why uh, he missed it the first time. He overcompensated and hit it. Well, he nearly hit it, uh, nearly missed it on the other side this time. Yeah, so first chance for Sean Murphy. We know how good of a player he is with the rest. He's, he's avoiding that one. He's taking the one just above the back. Good pot. And he's nicely on the blue. And the beauty about the one table now, just take, for example, the blue that Sean's going to pot now. When there's two tables, you could see the play on the other tables, which has got to be a bit of a distraction, but now no distraction and no noise coming from the other table. Perfect conditions. And of course, there'll be a new cloth on this table. I'm not sure. Six. When they put it on, probably overnight. But this is the table that wasn't playing all that well, the Ronnie O'Sullivan Mark Williams game. It was it was a little heavy, the cloth, but uh, seven. Yeah, it may have been something to do with the weather of course yesterday, Ryan and Sometimes can have a, a bit of an effect on the conditions in the arena as well. And Stephen made a very good point at the top of the show about Sean 14. Murphy getting off to a good start, Dennis, and scoring very, very heavily. That's one of his great attributes. And it's situations like this that you would feel he has to stamp his authority very early in this match. 50. Still a couple of loose reds after this next red, but he'd be already 20. in his mind about how he's going to develop some of the, the reds that are tightly bunched. Yeah, I thought Sean was going to have a tough match in the quarterfinal against uh, Belgium, Luca Brussel, but uh, Luca didn't play very well, and Sean was just uh, a little bit too good. And that's a terrific attacking shot there. I'll show you that again. You can see the side just arcing the cue ball. It'd be nice if you could uh, take the frame with one visit here just to stamp a little bit of authority because I would say Mark has been getting better as the tournament's gone on. Sean, not at his best, but. 
I think he will 29. raise his game for this semi-final. Mm. Well, that was a better pot than it looked. Kept him back in prime position now. He's looking pretty good, very confident. Yeah, against Luca Brissell. It wasn't the best match he played. He got a lot of help 34. from his opponent, but he got through comfortably enough. But I'm sure these are the type of games that he will certainly he would expect them to raise up a notch or two. Just bouncing a little bit further. That's the sidebar. 71 points he's looking for. I don't know if he can run through. 42. Or whether he'll have to screw back for the, the blue. He might just have to use one of the reds on the way through here. 43. That's the only problem when you do that. It's difficult to control it, so he needs one more good shot. And there is a red he can cannon on to, and that would stop the white from running away up the table. Yeah, these are difficult pots, aren't they? Into a blind pocket. Yeah, that's the one there. If he can hold and play a cannon onto that, he'd be perfect. 50. Full on, just a little bit either side. As you can 50. see, he just went into that red full ball. He still should be able to... Cut this in. Not quite sure whether he's on that red into the right corner pocket. He may have to use just a little bit of swerve on it. Lots of left hand side here just to create the angle. Yeah, he's not sure whether he can see enough of it. And when you do put the side on it, the thing is, he's opened all the, the reds up. He's got a 54 point advantage. It looks a little bit tight that. So he's decided against it. And what about that for the shot? Bridging over another run. Yeah. 51. Well, that was just brilliant. Let's have a look at this again. Worth watching. That was a fantastic pot. And particularly bridging over the red as well. Down on the cue ball. Now he just needs one good positional shot here. Just looking at bridging over that red, never easy. Well, every chance now of winning the frame with this visit. What a start. 55. For Sean Murphy, who's got his wife Elaine and baby Harry here. They're in the players' room. He's got a gorgeous little boy. 56. He was fast asleep, very content. A little bit like his dad. Well, there you see it. 67 ahead, 75 remaining. This red. 63. I believe Max Selby needing the snooker. Sixty-four. And certainly he want to be at least potting this red. He doesn't want his opponent coming back to the table. Sixty-nine. Just gotta concentrate. Frame's not over just yet. Oh, good pot. This is an excellent start, Seven. Dennis. It has to be said for different Sean Murphy. This is the best he's queued throughout the tournament. It's been 97 centuries so far in this year's Betway UK Championship, and Sean's had five. 5 going to have to knock a long red right up into the pocket there to the left of the yellow. If he's going to have a chance of making the century. 77. And when you think, Dennis, this all just came from Sean Murphy's break off. Oh, 
watch out. There's a magician about. Rob Walker introduces Sean as the magician. Well, he's waving 85. that magic wand here in this opening frame. 86. Can he knock this red out that he's just leaning over there? Too far, so he's going to have to pull another cracking pot into the corner pocket if he's to make the century. Very difficult <laughs> red will give him the century. He's knocked everything in, but this is tough. 99. I'll tell you what, he'll get some cheer if this goes in. Knock some balls in here. Oh, oh. what a shame. No century so break. Now it's in one start. On the first one. Mark Selby gives Sean Murphy one chance, and he made enough to take the opening frame. It's 1 0 to the magician. Is that foul shot by Selby earlier on has let him in and done exactly as you said before the start of this match. It's taken his chance and really shown it to Selby right away. To must have been. Or just stand at top of the stairs, listen to me. Great start. Um, yeah, very important uh, because you th if you if you if the frames go on long, you, you fully expect Mark, Mark Selby to win the majority of them. So that that's very important. That's got to be the pattern of the match for Sean Murphy to win this semi-final. Important to show him that he is in stroke early on here. Yeah, but also important for himself. It's nothing like getting off to a good start mm. in a match. You know, like, uh, I know he's a best of 11, uh, even if it's a best of 17. That first frame can sometimes tell the story of how the day unfolds. And in a one session match, like uh, we have now in the uh, UK Championship, uh, it can be sort of, you know, a good springboard. Yeah, and this is a rare match over the last 22 months or so. It's been a long time since they played uh, one another. In fact, the last time was in the German Masters final, 9-7 Selby. But before that, some very intriguing matches between them. And they've, they've always come together at key moments and produced very, very good matches, Stephen. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're two of the best players in the world. You would expect them to produce top quality snooker at this stage of, of a major event. Um, you'd be very disappointed in, if, it, if this wasn't a high quality match. Well, it's been a great start. We go frame two. Now, let's see. Mark Selby's break off be as good as Sean's in the forest. I think he's covered the red just below and to the right of the blue. Now you see it into this bottom right hand corner pocket. Black doesn't pot into the bottom. Right corner pocket, so he's got to be careful here. The red on the left hand side of the table near the cushion is in his way, and that's why he's shaking his head a little bit. It's not a straightforward safety shot back the ball kick. 99. Maybe two cushions, side cushion. Top cushion here and nestle into the back of the pack. Selby to do here. He's reluctant to just roll in to the Reds, but uh, there was no way back up to the bulk end of the table. And the amazing thing about both these players, they've played each other, what, 25 times in total, and believe it or not, they've only played each other once in the UK Championship, and that was in the final. Back in 2012, when Mark won that, 10-6. Amazing, they've only played each other once in the UK. Well, this is going to take a different 
pattern to the opening frame with the pink going safe, the black tied up. And we know that Mark Selby is the better tactical player. But that was far too thin. Bit of a miss hit there, but of course there's not a lot for Sean to go for. He'd have to get back for the blue or balk colours. Now this will give us an indication of how well this table's playing because this type of shot, we, if he's going to attempt the pot and screw back, if the cloth's slightly damp, it's so difficult to do. Looks good to me. One. And he couldn't have hit that any better. Well, we were looking right down the barrel of it. Superb Keown. few loose reds here and the red above the black what's the closest to it that does put in the bottom right hand corner pocket if you can get at that not from this shot here of course but a couple of shots time if you can get that that red away from the black Dennis it'll be certainly open into the bottom left hand corner pocket and will increase his chances of making a sizable break but he's got to play a couple of decent shots before that. Well, he's just Five. coming up a little bit short. If he had had the right angle on the blue, he could have done what you said, Ken. If he could have got the white in the circle there, he could have played that red and freed the black. But he's the wrong side of the blue. Another test of how well he's queuing. Has to pop this and screw it back again. Ten. Well, you can hear a pin drop at the moment in the barbican. Eleven. And once again, he's just over screwed for the blue. Now, can he get himself up into that position we showed you previously? The red at the back of the black also goes, but let's see what sort of angle he's got on the yellow here. Yeah, he might just be okay. It needs to keep coming a bit further. No, he'd have to can on the black if he takes that now. 13. I'm not guaranteed to get nicely onto the colour here when he cannons the black. You're never sure where they're going to go. Forty. Yeah, very difficult that was. So. To show you it again, he just got as much screw and reverse side, but it was always going to be difficult to get out of that situation. Well, here's a little shot he could play. It'd be very dangerous, but he could try and play for the pink here. And leave the, he's looking at trying to leave the cue ball down somewhere near the yellow pocket. But if he had the, the audacity to play that type of shot, then it's dead yeah, weight. I've just put the it's shot up that yeah. you called, Ken. I'd have a go at that. It's a big yellow target, ball. isn't it? Sean Murphy, 14. That's OK. It's not going to put too much pressure on Mark Selby here. He's got a couple of options left or right hand side of the table.
good safety from Max Selby. Now, if Sean Murphy has taken that red down the left hand side, he's can just about see the edge of it. But of course, the red would be going across the other side of the table and may end up over the bottom right hand corner pocket, and that's what he's a little bit afraid of. This is the fascinating thing about the game of snooker. We've seen the opening frame. Well, finished with one visit. And now we've got this tactical battle, which a lot of people enjoy just as much as the uh, big breaks going in. Played it well. Don't get me wrong, Sean Murphy's a good tactical player as well, but you would have to give Mark Selby the edge in that department. And of course, Sean also did a bit of work with the great Ray Reardon, six times world champion, as indeed Ronnie O'Sullivan did. So you do learn a few tactics from that man. Now that's certainly opened things up. Another <laughs> few rolls. And we've been in behind the blind. Decent length with the cue ball, but hasn't covered this red into the right hand corner pocket. He's left Mark Selby possible pot on this, and there is a gap. So you can play this as a shot to nothing. Cue ball back to balk, and of course, the yellow being off its spot and near its pocket. That will certainly help his cause if this red goes in. Excellent pot. Now is he on the yellow? Yes, he is. Great shot, one. No. Good chance here for Max Elby. Plenty of reds in the open. And what a wonderful opening pot to create this opportunity. One good positional shot here. And the frame could be at his mercy. Not a good chance just yet, but uh, yeah, that opening pot was terrific Great. from Mark Selby. And if you if you're going through the practice room, you'll see the players practice this type of shot. They know how important it is. Wow! I thought Four. he'd missed that. I can't believe that one's gone in. Mind you, it's a brand new cloth, so they tend to go in off the angle. But have a look at this. Now, that wouldn't have gone in yesterday, that's for sure. It's just because it's a brand new cloth that let that slide in off the angle there. Seven. He's got a bit of work to do, I know there's plenty of reds open but really eight he wouldn't say it's a frame winning chance just yet until he gets that black in the open Dennis what do you think Ken if he potted the blue and just nudged the red next to the black it would knock it into play and he'd be on well two or three reds doesn't have to do that but that is a not an opportunity that is there but he's going to do it his way he'll have to keep getting back on the blue because we know that black doesn't go. 13.
14. He's got that angle again, hasn't he? You see, the black won't go, Ken, but if, I suppose if he could get on that red there and, and, and remove it, then eventually the black will pass. So he's got options here. Mm. I'm just wondering, he's just came around to have a look with the black pot into the bottom right-hand corner pocket. If he gets on the red just to the left of the black. Interesting to see. Well, that I think that black may pot into this 19. bottom right hand corner pocket. He's got a nice angle on the red, he can go up for the blue, but he can stun across for the black into the same pocket as well. And decided to go back up for the blue, needs to go a little bit with the cue 20. ball, it looks a bit straight. Tells us the angle can't even force the blue in and force an angle for the cue ball back down to these reds. So he's going to have to just drop the blue in and take the red maybe just to the left of the black spot here. There'll be a bit of distance between cue ball and the red, and this is certainly no gimme. 25. Shot again, just uh, catching that right hand jaw, but still sliding in. Well, now he's got the uh, red, and as Ken mentioned, the black may be available into the right corner. Mark's coming around to have a look at that. 31. So he's having to work very hard for these that weren't in ideal positions by any means. Just looking at the scores, he's 17 points ahead. If he takes three reds and blacks here, that'll put him 41 with still 43 on the table. So he's going to need one of those two reds on the right hand side cushion to win the frame. So he's got a bit of work to do. But this so far has been a great response. Frozen out completely in the first frame. 39. He's had to work hard to get himself into this position. Well, it's been good so far. Top draw. 40. And the way he's queuing also, we could be in for an absolutely cracking semi-final here. <laughs> Tell you what though, he's wobbled quite a few into that uh, corner pocket. That corner pocket has been good to him, hasn't it? Uh, 47. Been three pots in there has hit that jaw. 48. Now, has he overdone that? He may have to screw back off the cushion and try and screw across in between them. That's the shot. He's digging right down at the bottom of the white. Come right across the table. That's not a bad effort. He's already 41 ahead. 55. So one good pot with the rest. And he's uh, virtually going to win a frame with one visit. But this is not as easy as it could have been. No. No, it wasn't that easy, you were right. Mark Selby, 55. And has he left it? He just needed the red, and he was just trying to not hit it with too much pace, but it was certainly offline. There's no sliding in off that jaw. 
can he hold for the black and can he pot the red it's very very fine cut if the red was a little bit more off the cushion here he could slide off the the one above it and really play a, a very aggressive safety shot and try and get the cue ball behind the brown and green but I think that red is too close to the cushion to play that shot no he didn't really fancy it did he and he had to get on the black because he's uh, 41 behind he did a thinner contact than that Great to have a pop like that for frame ball. Eight. Well, the misread, but Mark Sean Murphy eight. stays in his seat. He said that's enough. So Mark Selby gets off the mark. And it's now Mark Selby won. Sean Murphy won. We know both players are queuing well. Okay, Mark missed the game ball, but he got an easy red to clinch it. Thank you, quiet down, please. Thank you to third frame. Sean Murphy to break. Still the best of 11. Interval after four. And Sean gets the third frame underway. Hasn't quite covered that one. Mark might take this on. There is a gap between the black and the red on the cushion, and uh, as I say, knocked similar type pot in in the previous frame. Can he do it again? Ooh, not quite. Well, I don't think he's covered it. So one good. Oh, with the blue coming to the rescue, maybe not. Well, it has. That white had a pulled up an inch short, he could have took this on. It's a snooker player's pet hit when you play a safety shot and you catch one of the uh, ball colours. OK, he hasn't left anything, but uh, Sean just looking to see if he can play the safety shot and maybe make the plant. I don't know if they're in a direct line or not. Uh, he could if he just plays the first red to the right of the pocket. No. 
and as you can see, he had more thoughts on the safety there. And at first glance, can't see an escape route to get back to the uh, bulk end of the table here. Yeah, when he came down to have a look at the plane of containing safety shot and leaving the cue ball down around this bottom right hand corner pocket, but I don't think that's an option because right below the black will pot and also the red just above the pink to the right will pot into the left center. We could be leaving Sean Murphy a free shot. So maybe I'm not quite sure we can I'm looking down the line here, just past the blue. Can he swerve it? He's trying to go down on the cue ball. He can swerve it just around the blue and try and clip this red. And carefully he doesn't hit the blue on the way back. Well, we know how attacking Sean Murphy is. He's got this red, but uh, where's the cue ball going to finish? He's going to cannon into reds and... You'll have to trust to luck here with the cue ball. Got to make sure of the pot, though. <laughs> and uh, he did trust to luck. And One. if he can't get through to the yellow, he's got a bit of a problem. He can just pop that red and just hope that something happens. <laughs> Couldn't have finished in a worse place. Don't know if he can get directly through to the yellow. He might have to swerve it a little bit. If not, he'll have to come off the cushion near the middle pocket to play the yellow. yellow. So he's yellow too ball. close to the cushion, so he is coming off the cushion. And he might just drop in behind this yellow. Has he hit it hard enough? Has he hit it hard enough? Oh, he's put himself Five. where he wanted to put Sean Mark Selby. Mark Selby, four. Free ball. I wonder what Mark Selby, well, he's going to let him play from there, but he did have a free ball there. He could have taken the green on to the right centre. I think he might have done, Ken, but just looking at where the brown is, if he had to roll the green in green back on its spot, I don't think he'd have been on a colour really, so uh, I can understand what you're saying because everything was safe, so it would have been if the brown had been on the spot, might have done yeah, You feel it's such a big target to hit the, the two reds below the black spot here I mean, he could nestle into one of those reds and not really leave anything I'm not quite sure whether Mark Selby may have taken enough time I'm going to think about that particular oh. shot. Let's see how he gets out of this one. What an escape he's going to try here. He's going to have to hit quite a few cushions. I don't know if he can pull it off, but it will be some shot. That's the sort of angle he's looking at to see if he can land on that red. And I'll tell you what, that would be some shot. He's uh, decided on something else. He did play with a touch of check side, Mark but uh, he didn't get anywhere near the reds there. I mean, to get the two cushion escape, it's obviously not not a natural angle. He's having to play it with a touch of side, but I mean, when you're playing a shot like that, it's uh, it's virtually impossible to judge it correctly. It's so difficult. Yeah, normally when you play this particular shot, it's always with run inside. But when you're trying to use the check side here, it's just so much more difficult to judge. I think okay. I think your line, Dennis, would be a, a better option here for Sean Murphy because this is a bit of a hit and hope right here. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
absolutely superb well played. Well, Mark Selby just tapped the table all the way along there because he knew that that was, what, the odds against getting that? Maybe one, two out of ten, but he judged it to perfection. You won't see a better escape than that. I think you'd have to be a, a snooker player to really appreciate that shot that uh, can, you know. Yeah, it's so difficult to hit, and he couldn't have played it much better. It's just that when you, you can never judge how much side is going to take, not off the first cushion, but certainly off the second cushion, and it was judged to perfection. Well, he hasn't got away with it. He thought the only red he could leave was the one he's having a go at, and uh, it's gone all the way around the table and finished up in a potable position. And that makes one. such a big difference in the game of snooker. If you do have a go, um, you can get away with the shot. Makes a vast difference, but on that occasion, Sean left the red on. Six. Well, Mark was having a quick look at it. You can put this red, get on the pink. I'll go back up for blue if he wishes. Looks like he's holding for pink now. It'll be Seven. interesting to see where the pink goes here. Will it go back on its spot? Looks like there might be enough room, but that will certainly congest things a little bit. Just using the ball marker to see. It looks like there's plenty of room for the pink there. Thirty. Looks very straight. That red into the left corner pocket. Hell for the black into the left centre, but certainly the black I don't think will spot on its own spot, so we'll go on the highest available and we'll end up on the brown spot. If the pink goes into the left centre, well then that will be very advantageous to Mark Selby's cause here. You can pot this red, pot the pink into the left center, and then develop some of those reds around the pink spot. 22. The shot tells us it's open. So you can pot the pink, move the red just away left of the spot, and then have the two reds into the bottom corner pocket. And now all of a sudden, a couple of shots, Dennis, and everything is out in the open. Yeah, it's terrific watching uh, Mark Selby break build. As it is, all the top players, they're so good at creating chances and developing the situation, as we've seen there. 29. He's right up there with the all-time greats in the brick building department. He's made 445 centuries. He made 47 last season. 
27 so far this season. But the number of frames that he wins with one visit is quite extraordinary. Still has that bit of movement 36. with his head, but he's always had that. In fact, it used to be uh, it used to be worse, and he still kept winning. It's just a, a little thing that he does, but he's been working on it. It's all about having everything still just as you deliver the cue. Forty-two. Forty-three. And when you think of the way the balls were when he came to the table, it didn't look to be a sizable break on. Forty-nine. Back up for the pink here, and then of course two reds around the black spot now. Will be 50. his next choice after this pink. He's really developed these very favourably indeed. Great control of the cue ball. And of course, that's the art of break building, making the next shot as easy as possible, keeping that cue ball on a string. Now, have a look at the table here. It doesn't look like there's a big break on, does it? The pink's awkward, the black is 56. not going in many pockets, just the middle pocket but that was his first red and I mean to get to this situation the positional play has been superb I think what's more impressive Dennis is the after the start that Sean Murphy had I mean he only played one shot in the first frame Max Selby he was in trouble from Sean Murphy's break and then after he 57. played his escape, he sat down for the rest of the frame, but how well he has come back. He's kept Sean Murphy pretty cold since then. 63. Sixty-four. Well, that's virtually one mistake, and you you're going to lose the frame the way both players are playing. Good to watch. Seventy. Going to be very difficult to, to make the century, but you never know. He had 99. Sean had 99 in the opening frame, just missed out on a red down the cushion. 76. Red to the right of the uh, two reds will go. <laughs> he just overscrewed it. He's almost straight. Never going to be easy to get out from that position, but he won't be too concerned about that. He got one chance, and that break of 83 takes Mark Selby into a two frames to one lead. And that momentum that Sean Murphy had with that opening uh, effort has been completely negated. Uh, how do you read the pattern of these last couple of frames, Steve? Um, well, I think it just shows you how, how strong Mark Selby is, that uh, regardless of the scoreline, 
he plays really solid snooker. Some players uh, do are affected by the scoreline. I mean, it's something, you know, obviously you would sort of, like, as a coach, uh, mind coach, you'd be saying it's irrelevant. But it's hard not to sometimes look at the scoreline and be affected by it. Uh, but Mark Selby seems to be able to play good snooker from wherever. Yeah, and uh, obviously there's been a little bit more mixing it up in the tactical department, and that's something that you fear for Sean in, in that regard. Uh, very much so. Um, you fancy that, as I said earlier, Selby's going to win the majority of them frames, but it just shows how focused and how, how, how good a temperament Mark Selby had. I mean, he did, he did that to John Higgins yesterday, had a centre of the first frame. He, he had that done to him today, but he's come right back out and, and won the, the next two frames. Virtually one visits. I know he, he broke down in the second frame, but um, very impressive. It is, and you know, we were wondering how much, if, if anything, that 6-5 would take out of Mark Selby. I know you made the point, Steve, that it's not the World Championship, it's not been over two or three sessions here, but nonetheless, the mental application, the extra effort that he had to apply because yesterday was considerable. Yeah, and they've been here for something like 12, 13 days, 12 yep. days, something like that. So it's been a, it's been a bit of a grind long the whole tournament. tournament. Yeah, yeah, it's a long so. tournament now. So, yeah, Mark but that's Selby's Mark Selby's strength. You know, the application uh, and uh, the relentless snooker he plays, it seems like he can drag it out on a daily basis and, and I wouldn't put it past him, you know, that regardless of this match, you know, if he was a tournament next week, he'll be bang on it again. OK, well, he's done it over 17 days earlier this year at the Crucible and here we are in York and he has the lead, the world number one. Two one up on Murphy, one to play before the interval. coming up after this frame and you feel it. already it's an important frame for Sean Murphy he's queuing very well and that's another excellent safety shot you saw how well he queued in the first frame he's hitting the ball superbly well and there's only just a couple of shots one shot in each frame has really cost him it's a tough school out there This is what he's got to do against Mark Selby. He's got to really put Mark in a few difficult situations to try and create the chance. Can't just come off a side cushion, nestle into the pack because the reds are available either side. And if he leaves the white up in the left corner of the table, there's a possible pot on. And if he tries to come down off this red, he could get the double kiss. He's playing with loads of side. Look where he's queuing at the cue ball. Yeah, double kiss was always on. So there was that very good safety shot from Sean Murphy that's forced an opening. He's been slightly fortunate. You see the kiss on the black and just look where it's knocked the black. It's not straightforward here, but Sean Murphy, can he screw back and avoid the, the reds? Well, he could do, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> I didn't think he could get enough. Screw on left hand side just to avoid the kiss on the red. Just have a look how close he went to this red here. We had a kiss that red would have made this black a little bit more difficult, but he's okay. Now, these blacks are quite easy, but if you're going to have to screw back as he might have to do to get onto the red for the middle, you can see him queuing right down at the bottom of the cue ball there the backspin could have done with just a little bit more action on that yeah, it looked like he was almost just making sure of the pot there eight he's good queuing this type of shot into the left center good pot nine Well, he's got a decent chance here, and as Ken mentioned, mid-session interval coming up. He'd love to take this one and go to that interval all square. But there's a lot of balls to be potted before we get to that stage.
พี่เลิศนักเตะคนนี้Sean Murphy blessed with tremendous amount of cue power. It's finished rather awkward. Played it well enough. He's only got a possible pot into the right 27. middle pocket. We'll just show you this again. He hit the red he intended, and watch the white keep spinning. Just needed to spin back a few more inches. He's opened the reds up perfectly, but this is a tricky little one into the right. Middle pocket. I think he can run through for the. Just check and see if the pink will go. But if not, he can run through for the blue. But it's awkward bridging, so it's a key shot here coming up. Bit of pressure on this tennis. Bit of pressure on this shot. Yeah, he's missed it. It's just that little bit of pressure because of what he was leaving, and just look at what he's left, and it was a very, a lot more difficult. And it looked. Yeah, it's one of those situations. You go back to your seat and you think, "I've opened all these reds up," and you might have to sit there and watch your opponent pop them all. One. One. A little bit of good fortune when he split the reds there, and I'm sure he would have went on to make a frame-winning break the way he was queuing. And now Mark, having made breaks of 55 and 83, there's a few more to come here. Six. Well, it's not really a ball safe. You would have to say the only really. Seven. Difficult red would be the red that's below the black on the top cushion, but he can get a lot of points on the board before he contemplates taking that one on. Fourteen. Could have been kinder to him, that split, Sean Murphy, because he did get enough into the cue ball, just a little bit more pace, and he would have had something a lot easier, and, and the balls would have been there for him. But just have a look at this split again. Now, what's your reaction on the cue ball? He gets the zip on the cue ball, but just not enough pace, a bit more, and he would have had the red into the left corner. 23. Very fine margins. I can decide frames and indeed matches. And Max Alby goes on to win this frame from this visit. Maybe a turning point in the match. Thirty. Thirty-one. He's come sort of the wrong side of the black here. A bit of work to do with the cue ball. Didn't like the idea of going for that red below the black along the top cushion. You can't blame him from that. He's 11 points ahead. 38. He can 
when the frame from this position without even bothering about that red below the black. 39. Now then, the cannon hasn't quite worked out. Just watch this again. 46. Finished in the worst possible spot for him. This is a tricky cutback he's looking at now, so we're just so used to seeing him clear them up, but uh, it just shows you when you have to play a little cannon what can happen. Uh, can he? He's having to play this with lots of side because the red's in the way. We are right in line with the pocket. Is it going to curl in? It's not. It's staying there. Bob Selby, 46. <laughs> There's a chance for Sean Murphy, one that he wasn't expecting. But just that cannon didn't work out for Mark Selby, as indeed when Sean was in, the cannon didn't work out for him. Just show you this again. On the old cloths many years ago, with lots of nap, that would have curled into the pocket. It's a thin one. He has to watch what he does with the cue ball here. Keep it away from that corner pocket. And he has. How's your luck, Sean? One. It cuts in, but he's running away up the table, so... He's got an awful long way to travel if he's going to avoid all the colours to get back to the reds. He's just having a look to see if he can do that, and uh, it will be some shot. It's a thinnish snick on the black, but he's got a lot of colours to avoid if he's going to come back to the reds again. Let's see what happens with this. He's got to get it between yellow and brown here, hasn't he? Yellow and brown around two cushions needs to go. It's not too bad. He'll be happy with that. He's on this red to the right corner pocket. Eight. And we know how good he is with the rest, Dennis. One of the best rest players in the world. A lot of pressure on this one. One of the best we have ever had in the game with the rest. He really is. Nine. Not quite sure what he was expecting a little cannon on the red below the 16. back there in the top cushion just to try and knock it off the cushion. We still got this red. 17. And that red is going to prove to be the maybe the decisive ball in this frame, Dennis. Yeah, he can just drop in behind the other red. He's just coming around. He's got a choice of pockets to leave it. So looking at the angle on the black, if he just rolls it in, I'm sure he's going to be nicely on that one. Twenty-four. Well, just working out where he wants to put the cue ball, and then deciding if he gets nicely on that last red to roll it along the cushion to get on the black. So, it's going to be a tense finish to this 25. fourth frame. Before they go to the mid-session interval, he's got the perfect angle to pop the brown, come off the side cushion, drop in behind that red. Just depends how he feels about going for this. Bramble. He can go twice across or he can screw it. He's gone twice across, doesn't want to be straight. Anything but straight. Well, he's just off straight now. He's got choices. Does he force it to get out on the black? Does he roll it in and then roll up to the black and be in the driving seat? 
He's quite an attacking player, but if he plays this with any pace, it could wobble in the jaws of the pocket. We have seen the, the ball slide in because, as you mentioned, Dennis, because of the clot, he's just going to pot it. I think that's the sensible shot. Just roll tight up behind the black, and he's in the driving seat. White ball. <laughs> Just about. I'll tell you what, that's a better shot than it looks, Dennis, because <laughs> I think he his heart was in his mouth there. Down, please. Minute, wasn't it? But the fact he's finished so close to the black, this will test Satnav Selby here, I can tell you, because he can't come off a side cushion as we see that. Possibly just rock back a little bit, but wow, what a test. Mark Selby. He's going to have to hit a few cushions. There's a couple of ways he can go, but uh, whichever way he chooses is going to be very difficult. I think maybe come off this top cushion, Dennis, just before the left middle and try and hit the yellow on the way down because you can get a bit more force in it that way, a bit more pace. That's one way. The first line's probably a little bit out, but it's along that sort of line that he he needs to go. Listen, if he doesn't hit it, he could stick yeah. the yellow up. <laughs> <laughs> Said yellow there. <laughs> no. He Five might have minutes. to have a few goes at this. He needs to be hitting it a little bit harder than that as well. a bit more like the line he needs. Great shot. Great shot. He set it perfectly. Full ball to get it onto the ball cushion. He might have to uh, escape from another one. He hit it hard enough. This is careless. He had all four balls, brown, blue, pink and black to snooker behind. And that's a slip up. It's what we would call a yellow ball finish. You would think whoever gets in to pop the yellow would win the frame. Even though Mark's behind, they're all there for the taking. He could try and send the yellow onto the black, but he'd have to hit it full ball to keep the yellow safe and back down the table. That's what he may be attempting here. And he's played it well. Yeah, excellent shot again. there that's for sure I think he took a bit of paint off the yellow there good shot though oh it's over the pocket is it chance for Sean if it's Absolutely dead straight. We'll see the power that Sean Murphy has and that terrific cue action he has. It's not straightforward this by any means to get nicely onto the green, but has he got a slight angle? Just a bit. He might be able to run it around and in behind the green for the same pocket. Just making sure that it's going to be a in fact, I don't think the green passes the blue. I don't think it does. It doesn't. 
may have to take it into the left center here screw off the side cushion but the angle is not that great a bit surprised the way he played that yellow there yeah, i thought he was going to power it in and leave the green for the same pocket but uh Looks like he's taking it for the middle pocket. No. Where is the green going to finish? Joe Murphy took. Not bad. Black on the side cushion is uh, quite a bit of insurance for Sean Murphy. Mark Selby needs all the remaining colours. Sean just needing the green and brown. Is he going to get a chance to pot them? We've had a bit of everything in these four frames. We've had players winning the frame with one visit. We've had some terrific tactical play. It's had everything you'd like to watch. And this packed audience here at the Barbican, I think they're loving every minute of this. Almost identical with the average shot time there, as you can see. Um, Mark Selby just slightly ahead in the pot success department. And just the other way around in the long pot success. Yeah, just a contain and a safety shot, but doesn't really done much is gonna could be in a lot of trouble here green on the top cushion cue ball behind the brown oh, he just made sure the green and that's the most important thing isn't it to keep the object ball safe and he seems to be doing it more than marks I'll be looking at that stat there you wouldn't have expected Sean to have been ahead in the safety success department but he is What a shot he's played there, believe it or not. He played purposely to bring the black into play. Now, I wonder how many players would have thought about that. I could see him urging the white to cannon into the black as he played the shot there. What a gem he's pulled out there. OK, the green's a bit nearer the middle pocket than he intended, but just, just watch the shot here. Very clever. This is what makes him such a tough player to beat, Mark Selby. He's got the whole package. Foul, I'm gonna miss. Mark Selby, foul. And just all of a sudden, Mark Selby, you'd have to say, goes favourite for this frame, even though he's behind. Just that one clever little shot wasn't it the, the black was safe mark knew he needed the black to win the frame if he got a chance he's taken the black out he's covered the the green with the pink and, and he's put sean morphy in a lot of trouble here and of course it's so difficult to swear because the cue ball is so close to the cushion just having a look at the monitor that's this where one? it was and that's pretty good Okay. But as you say, Ken, with the... Uh, what, the blue? Just making sure the blue's in the right spot. 
but yeah, with the white close to the cushion yeah. to get the swerve. If you were closer, if the pink was closer to the white, okay. it would be a little bit easier. But sure. Mark, it's, a, it's what we call a delayed swerve. Foul. Now let's have a look. That's not bad, really. Mark Selby. Much better in the pocket than hitting the jaw and coming back up here and leaving the green on. The green is tough. What does Max Selby do here? Does he go for the green into this bottom left-hand corner pocket? Screw back for the brown. Does he try and lay another snooker behind the black with the cue ball? It's a straightforward shot, but looks like he's going to lay the snooker. Is he going for it? Is he laying the snooker? Went for it. Oh, has he got away with it? He has, but he might be snookered this time. Now, Sean played a shot similar and left it a bit short. He's got all those three colours to snooker behind, so he wants the green somewhere up near the black spot or just behind it and leave the white where the green is. Oh, well, short again, I think. Well, that's a poor shot. Those type of shots could cost them. Straightforward shot. And if anything, it should have been tight with the cue ball to the ball cushion just to make it a bit more difficult for Mark Selby. Very clever shot again. Got the cover with the pink. OK, it's the best of 11, but uh, what a huge frame this is. 3-1 or 2-all. Can he get that green safe? Would have done without the cannon on the blue. So one good pot here. And Mark Selby could go to the mid-session interval. 3-1 up. A little bit of pressure on this one. Oh, what a shot. Okay. You can see the long pause there before he delivered the cue. Seven. Absolutely perfect. And if he gets straight on the pink, nothing to do to get on the black. Twelve. A black that he moved out with a very clever shot about five minutes ago. Eighteen. And the black needed the black. Mark Selby. And he needed the pink. But Sean Murphy, well, it looked like he was going to be too old, but in the end, Mark Selby wrapped that table, and he's delighted. He goes to the end of a leading Sean Murphy by three frames to one. It's a big frame for him, Dennis. Just a few latecomers coming back in there. Can I ask some of you to turn the volume down on your earpieces, please? We can hear them down here. Thank you. Yeah. Brendan Moore just asking some of them to, just to turn the volume down slightly on the earpieces that uh, the audience have. It's a trend that started a good few years ago and seems to be very popular. They like to listen to the commentary when they come to the venue. What has he left? He's been very, very fortunate there. I'll show you the miss again. It wasn't easy by any means, but uh, could quite easily have left something. Wow, 
Oh, you missed that red by a fraction. Almost got the double kiss. Good return from Sean. But just have a look at this, how close the white goes to the red. Oh. You can see Sean Murphy's ahead in the safety success department after we all said how much better a tactical player Mark Selby is, but uh, we'd still go along with that. But uh, Sean has been putting in his fair share of good safety shots. I think it's one of those situations that really your camera. Can you not take pictures? Dennis, that Probably stats don't really tell a true story. I think when it came down to the crunch, and particularly in that fourth frame, that Selby was much more precise with his safety and created that opportunity to win the frame on the colours when it looked like the frame had already gone. Yeah, I think the key was when he moved the black off the side cushion, but in the end, because of the foul points, he, he didn't need that black, he just needed the pink, but it was just the selection, the shot selection to bring that black into play and just make it a one ball shootout as to who was going to take the frame. a mistake and I'm not sure if the black goes if the black goes into the right corner this is an early chance Mark Selby's just coming around to have a look at it it looks as if it will pot yeah well yeah, it seems to be enough room there Maybe he can't get through to that red past the pink, so he looked at the black, but that's for a few shots ahead because he, he can't get past. One. But it was interesting, the fact that he looked at the black, so how many shots ahead was he thinking there, three or four? It shows you how confident he was at getting that red into the... Yellow pocket. The only thing is it's so congested around the black spot area, even if he was to get on the black, you know, he'd have to move some of the red, so it's not straightforward. I think he can play into an area here just to the right of the pink, looking at maybe playing a small little cannon on the red. Not the closest one, but just down to it, to the right play it into an area. Now, if we could just cannon this red here now, it will be on two or three reds. Four. He's still on the red to the left centre. Is he on the red into this left corner pocket? That tells us he is. He can screw back and play another cannon into the red that's closest to the cue ball and have the pink into the left centre. That was a Excellent positional shot there from Max Selby on that green. Five. And when this pink goes in, it's going to really open up the frame. And a possible another 
big break here from Max Elby. Just that one little shot because it was all a little congested, wasn't it? No century yet, but uh, high quality 11. snooker from both players. So he's leaving well, that black. He doesn't want to have to be potting that and risking running out of position when he cannoned into the red. So he's just overscrewed that for the pink. So it's the blue. And that red's a little bit of a distraction underneath his body there. It looks as if he's leaning on it there, but he's not. No. Nope. That was caused by not getting on the pink as he intended. Mark Selby 12. And Sean Murphy, well, jumped out of his seat there. I think the red underneath his body was just a distraction there. One. Sean could do with uh, doing what he did in the opening frame where he wanted with one visit with that 99 break. Seven. Sometimes the interval can just change things around. Can he do it again here? Eight. They're not ideally placed for a sizable break. Fifteen. I think the red directly below the to the slightly to the right of the pink will pot there you see it. And when he takes that red, the other red is also available then into the right-hand corner pocket. It's one of these situations, Dennis, then. As he 21. pots one red, another one opens up and sort of unravels a little bit. 22. <coughs> yeah, there's still one available. I'm not sure after that. He's just coming around to have a look to see what else goes into that corner pocket. Those two are a little bit tight. Maybe the one between the red and black would be on in a couple of shots time. Twenty-eight. And he feels 29. as if uh, the one that's uh, just above the black pots into the left corner. We'll find out shortly. And this next shot will certainly open everything up. And just looking at the situation, 35. He doesn't have to force it. I suppose he could screw it in and open everything. But even if he rolls it in, the blues there. So this is a very key shot coming up. Well, he did in the end decide to screw it. He's potted two reds, and he's <laughs> got to drop nicely on the pink. 37. I say drop nicely on the pink. He's the wrong angle, but uh, decided to go right into them and 
finished up potting two reds. And he's taking that blue that I said was a just blocking the path for the reds into this pocket. And now the chance is there. He's took these very well. Yeah, and I think the two reds below the black will pot into the bottom right-hand corner pocket as well. So imperative. He has a nice angle on the pink after potting this red. Needs 43. To be very high on it. And that's not good. I think he's a bit too straight. Needed an angle on that pink, so he just put the pink into the right hand corner pocket and stunned down to the two reds into the for the same pocket. And you'll have to drop this in, and I'm not quite sure where you can get on that red below the black. He's on the red, but not going to be easy to get out for a colour. He's got a slight angle, I think. So I may be able to get onto the pink. Yeah, got enough angle there to do that. 50. But only just. I'll tell you what, if he takes this pink on into the right centre, he's got to get it. There's a bit of pressure on this one. He's got to screw the cue ball back. Oh, that's a great shot. Yeah, he's hit it too well. Have a look at that. How oh, well did he cue that? Well, I'll tell 56. you one thing for certain, Ken. There's nothing wrong with this cloth. It's uh, very responsive. Still needs the red. Oh, great shot. Great shot. 57. I think Mark Selby, when he missed that blue down into the right corner, he knew that this was a possibility. He was distracted a little bit with the red under his body. He played to get on the pink, overdone it, decided on the blue, and has been sitting in the seat ever since. <clears throat> but only one snooker needed at the moment, so Sean's going to have to be... Extra careful here. We know what Mark Selby's like Prima. when he needs one or two snookers. Sean Murphy, 57. Got the snooker, put the green safe. <laughs> so buying that snooker, Sean Murphy, wow, well, you'd think he'd be just one frame behind. I mean, probably the black's in the best position for to get a snooker in behind, but uh, you'd have to get a red and high-valued colour first. Oh, that's a clever shot there from Mark Selby. Although this red will cut. He's had a look at the angle. So this to make absolutely certain. One. And a nice nudge on the brown as well. Didn't really matter, but he can go on now to just see if he can clear up, which is going to be difficult because he did put the green safe, but that's irrelevant. Uh, such an important frame for him as well, Fine. isn't it? Let's get him back. Only one frame behind now. Six. I'm sure when we made that error at the beginning of this frame and Mark Selby was in amongst the, the balls, he feared the worst. But he was given a chance and Julie took it. Put some good balls in that break and a few pressure Eleven. ones as well, and that will... Certainly give him a lift because he's been would have been very upset with himself losing that fourth frame. But he won't be bothered about the yellow. Sean Murphy, 11 and he's the won the first frame and a much needed frame for Sean Murphy. 
And he reduces the deficit now, but it's still Mark Selby, three. Sean Murphy, two. He'd be absolutely delighted, Sean Murphy. That was uh, such an important frame to give back to just one behind, and it's still tough to pick a winner here. As Brendan Moore sets the balls up. That shot on the blue, he played to get on the pink and then had to take the blue can, but you yeah. just spotted something there, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, but just have a look at his back arm here now. I know he shakes a bit with his head, but just his, his arm is shaking a little bit there now. I know he's bridging over the ball on the left-hand side of the cushion, but a bit of tension in the arm. Quickly as you can, please. They're still getting people in. They left them back in, in between frames, but I think they could just organise it a little bit better break because six. the players shouldn't be having to wait Selby to, break. to start each frame. Just a little bit off-putting, that. Well, just stop walking a minute while he plays the shot. Thank you. Pretty good break off shot there. Just the red, the left side of the table's slightly awkward. Got to avoid canning into that one. Is this a three ball plant here into the corner pocket? Yes, it is. Yes, it is indeed. One. Mm. Mm. Well, you take the brown on. He's got two. Nicely worked out. Nice spot of gardening. Doesn't have to do much with the cue ball. Drop the brown into the right centre. Couple of reds right at the pink. What's in? And I'm just thinking in a few shots time, if that red next to the black is available into the right corner. Five. You'll be able to get on that black in a few shots time. Six. Doesn't have to play for it straight away. In fact, he's straight on the blue, so he'll just screw back and leave the one to the left of the pink, or just run through and leave the one to the right of the pink. But eventually, well, he's just had a look at the red next to the black.
Ilan. Twelve. Might tie the pink up when he pots it here, but that it doesn't really matter. I'm nearly certain that red next to the black will be available in a few shots time. for the black now. Yeah, that red will definitely pot. 18. I'm just looking to see if it, 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 is the black and red touching here. No, no, I think the red goes, but it, it's whether the the black pots before he moves the red. Seems as if they both go. I think he's just concerned that if he pots the red and pots the black, where does the black respot? And if it respots, will it block the path of the red after it respots? It clearly pots now. He's just wondering, do I need an angle after potting this red on the black to move the red above the black into play? Or will the black respot in its own place and the red will still be available? So. Sometimes in situations Nine. like this, Dennis, you don't take any chances, and, and that's why he's got low on the black. So you can pot the black here and move the red away from the black and be certain that it's in play. Or he can screw up for the two reds. Just above that red. Hoping this red will be okay. I'm sure it will. It's just it's plenty of room. You're just never quite certain here. You're always a little bit afraid that the black will respot and the red will be blocked. This is the key shot though coming up here. Good split. And that is just about perfect. Every chance now to go on. 34. And take this frame. Just that one shot has opened the whole game up. Thirty-five. It's amazing that they both potted seventy-six balls. reason why it shouldn't be 4-2 the score line. 42. That's what he's looking for. 69 will leave Sean needing a snooker. 43. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a little laugh with each other. I don't know whether they bumped into each other there, did they? Yeah, I'll we'll get them both on Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> He'd be very good on Strictly with Mark. I think there was something on the floor he was just pointing to Brent, but I don't know what he said to him, <laughs> but it certainly made the referee smile. But fully 51. focused again, making sure that he scores enough to take the frame. He's not many pots away from doing that. Fifty-eight remaining. There's a couple of reds and high-value colours, and be in the 
position where Sean will need a snooker. No. Wow. Mark Selby, 58. Oh, that's hard to believe. Didn't see that one coming. Don't think he got a heavy contact. Let's have a look at it. Hmm, not quite sure, but White's being clean. But what a chance for Sean Murphy. Okay, he's 58 points behind. Maybe he did. Looking at the smile from Mark, maybe he did get a slight heavy contact. Anyway, there's a one, a slight chance. There's a few awkward reds, but uh, Sean Murphy would have thought a moment ago he'd have been staying in his seat. Eight. Switch it off, please. Nine. If he puts this pink, he can leave a nice angle on the red. The, the cue ball is close to now to try and take the, the other red off the right hand side cushion. He can drop behind there. Red on the left hand side cushion as well. Well, he's taken that red away from the cushion and brought it into play. 15. I'm just wondering can he pot this red and still bring out the red that's on the right hand side cushion? Looks a natural angle. No. Well. He's, he's took his eye Sean off Murphy the pot 15. and tried to bring that red into play, but he hasn't left anything easy. He's had a bit of a result, but even an experienced player like Sean Murphy forgets about the pot and you concentrate on the cannon. It's amazing the number of times we see that. What does he do here, Dennis? Does he go for this red into the corner pocket? Does he screw it in or does he try and play a dead weight? It's a lot easier if he plays a dead weight, tries to drag it in, give it a chance to get into the pocket, but it's very missable. Oh, that's a super shot. Okay. That is a super pot under the circumstances. One. I think Kenny worked out. There was a couple of red safe. He had a big lead. He thought, I might as well have a go at this, but you can't get any better than that with the rest. I mean, that's as good a shot. He was hampered slightly with the blue. Eight. Nine. Yeah, the fact when you're playing those type of shots, you're playing with a lot of bottom and left hand side. You've got to be so precise and couldn't have played it much better. Excellent shot. 57 ahead, 51 remaining. He won't be no heroics with this 14. red. This red will stop Sean Murphy coming back to the table. Drop it in. And he'll be a relief, Mark Selby. To win the frame, he's needed a couple of bites at the cherry. It was a glaring miss into the right centre. and He thought Sean Murphy was going to go on. 22. Make a more sizeable contribution, but... Missed that red into the corner pocket, worrying about taking the red off the side cushion and... It's back to a difference of two now. 23. It's been a fascinating match so far, hasn't it? Really good. Yeah, I've loved every minute of this. We've had, you know, frame winning breaks. We've had some terrific tactical play. It's been very entertaining. And can we see? Mark Selby play a very entertaining Eight. shot here. Eight. 
Not quite out of the game. And Sean Sean Murphy had a chance to get back into that frame. He didn't take it. And Mark Selby now extends his lead. It's 4-2 to the Leicester man. Yeah, back to two frames, the difference once again. And uh, <coughs> Selby, well, he, uh, he, he actually missed one to the middle, this red. But uh, your assessment of this, Steve, because it was a tough shot, this one. It is, yeah, it was a tough shot. You expect him to get it. And obviously then um, Sean Murphy came to the table and you expected him to get his shot as well. But uh, the chance went a begging again. And, and uh, I know it's a pathetic thing to say as a, an analyst, but um, you could have a, a situation where during a match equal amount of mistakes are made by both players but it's the last one that seems to be magnified I, I think what, what it what it shows is when you've got two top players playing you have to take you, you, you know, the chance that when Mark Selby misses that first red in the middle it's so important to, for, to get you know the psychological edge in the match for Sean Murphy to capitalize on that and he didn't he let Mark Selby off the hook and now he's two frames behind it's uh, it's a fascinating and very enjoyable match and you'll probably see in the background John Parrott 25 years after uh, winning both the World and the United Kingdom Championship in the same year he's one of only five Loves players it. he's Loves ever it. done it and look at him you never lose it John how sad am I <laughs> class is permanent and of course Mark Selby's trying to do the same thing this week to, to do this and he'd become only the sixth player it's a tough thing to do you, two of you have done it um, and I just wonder why it's not been done more often Often, because when you're in stroke like that, when you're really in the groove, how hard is it to try and follow up the world with the UK? Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult. Um, I think that the top, top players really focus on these three big events. Um, so it's, it becomes harder to, you know, if you, if you really, there's so many tournaments now to prioritise just two or three. It's, I think it's becoming more and more difficult. Well, we're harder now, mm. more top players and also best of 11 makes it even harder as well from the best of 17s it was not impossible because there are some big hitters out there but um you know sean murphy uh, sean sean uh, mark selby's one of them but uh, i think anybody could do um a ding we could easily do it um, i'm sure ronnie o'sullivan can it's still at a breeze mark selby's in the equation how special a moment is it when you seven. do that though you win the two biggest sure, ranking titles of the year well that and the masters i yeah. mean if you if you were to win the three and basically you just think you've got all the sweets <laughs> <laughs> okay let's go back because we're <laughs> certainly enjoying this this is a sweet match so yeah, far isn't it it certainly is and steve davis he enjoyed uh, plenty of sweets because he won plenty of tournaments as did the fellow sitting next to him two of the all-time greats Ken, Sean Murphy has got to take this frame. It has to be said. Yeah, absolutely. Massive frame for Sean Murphy and Mark Selby, of course, if he went five two up, Sean Murphy would need all the remaining four. Certainly nothing wrong with Kiona. I mean, he's hit the ball as probably as well as I've seen him all week. Yeah. But just every now and again, there's just one little shot that will creep in out of nowhere for Sean Murphy. And sometimes it could be just concentration. A few simple safety shots, maybe in that fourth frame where he could have got a snooker and didn't. The yellow, of course, into the green. It's just very, very fine margins. And it always is at this level, Dennis. But just every now and again from Sean Murphy, you're going to have a little bit of a lapse in concentration that you don't normally see as much from the likes of Mark Selby. And that may be just the difference. Great pot. What a pot. Come.
was a sweet one. It certainly was, but it might only get him an extra five points. There's the long pot success. Red Sean ahead in that department. But if he's going to get to where he was queuing there, with the cue ball tight on the cushion, he's got a slight angle. This will be a very good shot if he can get on a red here. He'll have to force this a little bit. Is he on that red? I don't think so. Six. Nothing available there. Just a safety. Mark Selby, six. Wow, and a miss. Oh, it could be a free ball. Bob Selby for free ball. And he could take the brown up into the corner. It's a free shot for him. The brown will count as a red. He can just play to get on one of the bulk colours. It was a very difficult shot. Brown Sean ball. attempted there to hit the cushion and then just clip the red on the way back. But this is a free shot for Mark Selby. What a chance had he have knocked the brown in. He would have been on the yellow to pot it and get right up into the reds. Generous round of applause for the length of the safety shot there because there's no brown to play behind. It's up over the corner pocket, so it was important to get the cue ball close to the cushion there. I think Sean's just okay. He can get past the pink to clip the red and get back down to the safety area. Just having a look to make sure he doesn't knock a red towards the pocket of the browns over. the table but this red could possibly well, I don't think he's even thought about it I thought he might be able to put this red in off the brown and play for the black I mean the red will go past the brown but it's a sort of a big pocket it didn't Judge it all that well. <coughs> He's just working out here if he can take this long red and screw back for the brown. It'd be a sh shot to nothing, really, but if he pots this, it'd be a good chance. Well played. 
one. Great pot. Now we can play for the loose red, but he has a nice angle on this brown. The loose red over the black pots. Does he take a chance to go into the pack or just play for the loose one? Looks like he's just playing for the loose one. He's nicely on it. Now we can bring a few more reds into play when pot Five. must still be on the black. Six. Just got too much top spin on it there, Ken. It's difficult to judge when you're catching the other reds, but the tops, watch the white, it seems to stop and then watch it, all of a sudden it picks up pace. That's played because you're hitting the white at near enough 12 o'clock if you use the clock face. Good pot, good recovery. <laughs> Would have loved to. 13. Knock that red a little bit further out from the left middle pocket. It would have been straightforward for him then. Now, got another tricky little red into this bottom left hand corner pocket. I expect them to get it though. Forty. Short of pace for the blue, but the pink is okay. Got so much confidence in his long potting. Well, this is a medium range one. 19. Still need good queuing here. Twenty. And he's getting a generous round of applause. Uh, he's four-two behind, and the crowd are warming uh, to Sean. They want to see this intriguing semi-final go all the way. You feel? That might be unlucky. That might be a little unfortunate. The cannon hasn't worked out for Sean. And it's little things like this that makes all the difference. Had he hit that red full ball, he would have been on a choice of reds. As it is, it could be the end of break. This is a very thin cut required. OK, you can play it with an element of safety in mind. A beauty. Beauty. Thank you. 28. I love the way he played this shot. He hasn't played it with an element of safety to go up for the ball colours. He's controlled it off two cushions. A lot of bottom on the cue ball. A little bit of right hand side and held it for the pink in the middle. Brave shot that with the rest. I think. He's just okay, but Brendan Moore just says, Give me a second, Sean. It's an awkward uh, little position to get the pink there as near to its own spot in a direct line behind the black and blue if you take them in a straight line. Thank you. 34. Cut the red into the right middle pocket. The one into the right corner, he's hampered. He's looked at both. He's going to need the spider, I think, to get to that one. So his final choice is the one to the middle.
from Oh, he's overdone that just a little bit too much side and he can't get himself into absolutely prime position. Nine. He's having to work so hard for these. Maybe the red on the pink spot pots into the right center. And he was trying to get on the one just above the black into the corner. I think the red does pot into the left center. Might be a better choice. Where's the cute? Where's it going? Oh! <laughs> Sean Murphy, 39. I would normally expect him to pop that, but I think he was so disappointed he didn't get on the red that he intended, and um, well, he finished up missing that. And uh, how costly is that going to be? Not the best for Max Eight. Albi. He's got to go into the two reds and pink now. He's got to judge this well. This could go wrong. Just got to be careful here. Nine. Didn't get enough screw on the cue ball. <laughs> this black is a bit more difficult than he would have liked. Oh, great shot. Great shot. <laughs> that with a tremendous amount of right-hand side. I think he's slightly unlucky because he can't get to the one because of the blue. Here's the side. He wanted to hit the red rather than the pink. The only possible pot is the one near the right corner, and this is not a gimme by any means. Mark Selby, 16. I think Mark just looking at the crowd. Someone just uh, on his backswing had to cough and the timing wasn't very good. You could, you could just hear it there just before he delivered the cue and the referee looks round as well. So I suppose when you got a cough, you got a cough, but uh, just at the wrong moment there for Mark Selby. Well, he might just have got away with this. I think he has. He's had a major result there. Could have been on two reds, Max Selby. Let's have a look at this. But for that little kiss on the yellow, he would have been definitely on that red into the green pocket. I suppose every now and again you do need a little bit of luck. 
Now what does Mark Selby do here? Boy, is this thin. Is this thin or what? <laughs> he was thinking about it. He's looking at the angle again. I would maybe, I would say possibly two out of ten if you took this on. Oh, well, here we go. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. <laughs> well, he had no safety shot on, and he took on that shot. It was so thin. I didn't think it was on, to be honest, Dennis. Some shot. Not a bad where he's finished with the cue ball either. Six. I'd well, like to have that one back. He was planned to leave the red into that right corner and Instead, he's going to have to take it across into the opposite corner. This isn't straightforward. <coughs> Just get up on the shot this time. I suppose it's that time of the year where people have colds and they can't help themselves from coughing, but try and time it. going to be very difficult because both reds are safe. The one near the middle pocket's uh, tied Twelve. up also. But he put everything into this effort to go 5-2 ahead. He'd be a very, very strong favourite. Thirty. Let's get the pink out of the way. It's just blocking that red into the left corner. Nicely on the black, but uh, that red wouldn't go past the pink. So, just wondering if you can try and leave an angle on this next red, Dennis, so you can try and take one of these reds off the side cushion. The one on the right is not too bad because for a right-hander, you can get behind it. I'm not quite sure. I don't think that one on the left is potable. It may be to the left centre, but if you can get an angle on this red here. I'm sure he'll come around and have a look at this red into the left centre at some stage. 19. Now, can he pot this red? And knock the, the red on the left centre up over the centre pocket and still be on the blue. It's certainly... Got a nice angle to do that. Just a bit of a distraction, the red that you said he might try and cannon onto. I think that's what he wanted. The way he was looking at it, he wanted to play that shot. But it's just awkward. Just simply because of where that red is situated.
And in the end, I think he took a little bit too long. Mount he just Selby. couldn't get comfortable Nancy. on the shot. And I think a little bit of tension creeping in here because Mark Selby knows the importance of this frame. One. Well, it's a natural angle to cannon into that red, but he would have liked to have been better on the black. But it looks as if he will cannon the red out if he pots the black. But not into a favourable position. Eight. Had a look, does the red pass the green? Maybe enough room to go into that pocket, but again, difficult pot here. And of course, to see the angle because you're playing it into a, a blind pocket, but you can use the knuckle of the middle pocket to stay on the blue. Oh, great shot! <laughs> well, he's played it dead weight and played it very cleverly because. Yellow and brown would have covered the red. Now, can he get enough into the cue ball here with the green and get behind or even maybe dislodge the red from the cushion? Yeah, I don't know if he's got the angle. He'd love to be able to get the cue ball somewhere near there, being a right-hander. But I think the only way he could get round there would be... Couldn't do it off the green, might be able to do it off the yellow. yellow. And it's the yellow. Now, can he swing it around and get somewhere near that white? Well, there we go. Didn't even bother Surely trying to get on the red. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that is not only surprised us, but it surprised everybody in the audience. Clever shot. Well, it is a clever shot, but... Uh, can you keep the noise down, fellas, please? Know what Mark Selby's like at getting out Thank of you. snookers. Remember the great John Spencer, three times world champion, used to say, if you're at the table, you know, take your chance, because if you, if you play a snooker, it can, uh, it can turn around, so it'll be interesting to see what does happen here. The funny thing is, where he's, when he's hit the yellow, just look, have a look at where the yellow is finished, because the natural angle is off the side cushion, past the blue, and try and nestle on the red, but the yellow now is in the way. Well, can he get enough side to come around the back of the black off a couple of cushions? Yeah. I think he's going to go off ball cushion, top cushion here, and then try and nestle in the back of the red. One cushion, but you could knock this on here. Gotta be careful. Foul. Which could miss. be a free ball, is it? Sean Murphy. No. Yeah, it's not a natural angle the way he's playing it. He's going Please to make sure they're switched off. Thank you. He's having to play it with left hand side to square the white up, and he didn't get enough on and it that time. And you guys need to be quiet as well. That's the second time you've been told. There's a few boys just making a little bit of noise, and Brenton Moore has said that's the second time you've been told. So. Okay, sure. Now, can he get enough side on it this time? Nowhere near. Foul, I'm gonna miss. Sean Murphy, five. I'm playing it at that pace. It's not giving the uh, Christian a chance for it to square up. That's yeah. 
Olivia Martel giving the thumbs up to Brendan Moore. Well, why doesn't he try and play the cue ball through the green and brown, Dennis, off the ball cushion, top cushion, and try and lay this side into the yellow? Yeah, that's the shot that Ken's talking about, but he's still going to go with the other one. Needs to get a lot of swerve on this with side, and that's better. So one good long pot here, and that shot that Sean Murphy played when he snookered Mark will prove to be the correct decision. Mm. Wow, didn't see him missing that one. Normally so good at that particular shot. Came across it slightly. Just the tension and the importance of this frame, Cam. Mm. Now, what can Mark Selby do here? One shot. Nicely on the pin. Didn't think he was coming back to the table so soon. Sean Murphy missed the trick here. Oh, <laughs> what a result he's had there. Got, got into the it, result. Got into it too much, and yeah, what a flick on the Seven. yellow. Nine. Has a look at the score. He's three points behind, so he's going to need green, brown, blue, and pink. Twelve. Just has to leave the white where the brown is, and it's a perfect angle to pot the blue and get up for the pink. Massive frame for both players. Mark Selby. 16. Blue and pink will just need one more for a place in tomorrow's final. Sean Murphy will need remaining four. And what a steal this is 21. for Mark Selby. Just the pink to take a 5 2 lead. And in it goes. Seven on the front. And what a clearance from Mark Selby. Sean Murphy will be absolutely gutted as he goes out as well. Selby won away from the final. He leads Sean Murphy by five frames to two. Really interesting shot in the last frame Mark Selby had. He got the rest out and tried to play out to the snooker and then eventually decided to play it with, a, with his cue. Now, this is a funny shot, actually. Snooker behind the brown, playing for that red. The natural angle off the cushion, you'd think, is going to bring the green into play. So if you were trying to play down there, you couldn't possibly do it. So the shot you need to play here, and it's amazing what happens, as long as you screw the ball into the cushion, and in this case I'm going to play with a load of left-hand side, it straightens up the cue ball a lot more. So a natural angle would be nowhere near that red. But as long as you hit it into the cushion and you hit it hard, watch the way it straightens up. And bingo, you can hit the red like that. So use the cushion, screw in with a bit of side. It's amazing how many angles you can get. Thanks, John. And in fact, that uh, situation on the table was really the crux of that frame, Stephen. And mm. there were lots of questions going on at that point because Sean opted not to go for the last red and to put uh, Mark Selby under pressure. In fact, you could say he had the better of the safety exchange there, but just couldn't finish it off. Yeah, he's, 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 he's finished, um, he's, he's potted the red, he's, and the, the last red is obviously tricky, it's on the cushion, so he needs a, a good angle in the bulk colour. Um, he hasn't got the perfect angle to get close to the red, but Steve and I were talking, even if, it, even if you do uh, you know, pot the bulk colour and then play a different kind of safety off the last red, because with the red so close to the cushion, you know, someone like Mark Selby is always going to get a snooker eventually, but he actually played a different shot, but even if he played into dead weight, Sean wasn't really 
possibly getting that good of an, an advantage. How deflated will he feel? Because as we say, he did win that little battle on the safety, but couldn't finish it off. And yet again, Mark's come in there. And at this point in the match, he'll know that's a, sport, a sore one, Steve. Yeah, well, I mean, he forced an error, but he still had to pop the red, the last red. And uh, a lot of pressure on that, 4-2 behind. And, and he missed it by quite a way. He'll be disappointed that he had a chance and, and messed it, it up. hard, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, I wouldn't say banged at it, but he, he, he hit it firm, which is the thing you, you tend to do on, on a lot of long pressure balls. You hit them as firm as you can to try and overcome any of the tension in your arm. But the trouble is, um, if you're 4-2 four, four in front, you probably have a little bit more freedom in your cue and mm. you stroke it in a lot nicer. And when you start hitting balls hard, you get a different reaction off the cue ball and any unwanted side spin can, can alter the path of the cue ball. So, you know, a massive advantage, Mark Selby. And after, and after that, the, the, the long pot that Mark Selby potted, he just stroked it in. Yeah. There, were, there was no sign of overhitting in that one. He, he managed to keep his everything under control and cue properly. Pressure squarely on Sean Murphy now because Mark Selby just one frame away from another UK Championship final. He's been in two already, but not since 2013. Can he get over the line Thank here? Back we go. Eight. Ken and Dennis. Mark Selby to break. That is the question. Can he get over the line? He'd love to do it in this frame. That's opened the reds nicely from the break off. OK, it's coming up a little bit short, but it's still a pretty good break off shot. Now well, can Sean Murphy put the disappointment of that last frame behind him and pull out all the stops here. There's one thing for certain, he'll give it a real go. Oh, I thought he'd knock that in. And he's left a chance for a red to the right corner and Mark can get on the black as we show you this attempt. Uh, he was so close to this, just the pace, but one good pot from Mark Selby here. I think he's got the angle to leave the black. Yeah, he has. decided to play for the pink and I think the reason he did that was he thought if I try and pot it and get on the black of a miss it I'm going to leave the two reds which is very unlike Mark Selby isn't it Ken? Yeah very surprised there and particularly the way he won the last frame he stroked the, the last red and made a good clearance and certainly didn't stroke that one Future starting to miss a few balls now. This is certainly went straight forward. Well, I didn't think he had the gap between the red and the green. Have a look at this. Yeah, it wasn't that easy. The green and the red, it would have been in his eye line as well. Not touching him, trying making a foul, but there's always going to be a tricky red. Now, what can Sean do here? Yeah. Beautifully cured. It's OK, he's on the pink. He's on the blue and he can get on that red below the green and pots into the yellow pocket. Six. Looking at an angle on the brown here. Needs to get on to those. After putting this red, putting the brown, get on to the two reds, one above the black, one below the black. Seven. Surprised. 
Why is he trying to go into them so soon? There was a couple of reds available there. Eleven. And, and they weren't perfectly placed to go into. The pink was away from them. Almost went in the pocket there. Joe Murphy, eleven. Two reds below the pink there as well. I'm not quite sure whether they were a plant into this corner pocket, but I don't think Sean Murphy even had a look at it. And you can see it's going to the left-hand pocket, but there was enough room between the two reds that he could have made that plant as well had he come down and had a look. And it was a mistake. I'm like you, Dennis. I don't think he needed to go into the pack of reds and the brown. Well, that's an attacking safety, but you never know what's going to happen when you open the reds like that. And he certainly wasn't expecting one to spring out of the bunch and go right over the pocket. But when you play this type of shot to open the frame up, you're never sure where they're going to finish. You don't usually see Sean sort of talking to himself, but he was uh, certainly surprised to see that finish right over the pocket. One. Pink's available. Black will go only into one corner pocket, but look at the reds. If you could get yourself into a position, they're sitting very nicely indeed. And the chances there for Mark Selby. Pink might have to go up onto the brown spot. If he can get to 71 points, he'll be in the final. And it's 2012 since he lifted the UK title. He'd love another one to go with the two world championships that he won. Just enough room. Seven. Great chance now Eight. from the man from Leicester. Just taking his time. He knows he's just one or two shots away from being absolutely perfect if he can get that red away from the one that's just to the right of the black there as we see it. And that's not what he intended. The black's going up onto the brown spot now and the pink's tied up. So he made a little bit of a mess of that. 15. Yeah, he's hit the inside of the red. He really wanted to hit the other side of that red. Would have been okay. Now can he generate enough pace in the cue ball to get it up for the Bluer, even possibly the black here again. I mean, this is a good shot. It looks okay. 16. That was an excellent shot from that position. Have a look at the side spin of the second cushion, just widen the angle. He's played it well. He couldn't just drop that in. He had to play it with a little bit of pace. And when you're tight on the cushion, you 21. have to cue them well. And he cued that exceptionally well. He's coming up a little bit short this time. 22. So quite a bit to do with the cue ball now. Just 
Got to make sure he doesn't cannon into the black. It looks as if he'd have to go between the black and yellow because the brown's awkward if he goes between black and green. So this is not straightforward. Lots of left-hand side and screw on this. Played it well. Now, how's his luck here? Needs a little bit of a good kiss. <laughs> and that's... 27. Well, at first glance, it looks like it's a good kiss, but has he got an angle to get out again? I can't do a great deal with that one. No, oh, I'm just wondering, is the red available into the right centre? Doesn't look like it. He's digging down on this, trying to bounce it. Get a bit of backspin on the cue ball. Well, I think that it's going to jump, isn't it? Striking down like that. And will the white grip? That's the thing. I don't think he can get up for the blue off this shot. It'll be some effort if he does. He could play this red. It's close to the top cushion. Just try and drop it in. Natural angle of the cue ball will be gone up towards the blue. We have seen a few balls slide in off the jaws because, as you de said at the beginning of this match, Dennis, it is a new clot, so if you can try and drop this red in, give it a chance to go into the pocket, the angle of the cue ball back up for the blue. Not easy, though. Great shot. Great shot. 28. Gonna need another good shot here, isn't he? Blue in between yellow and black. This time with a lot of left hand side. Back up for the reds. Oh, and well he certainly got plenty of left hand side. And how's the kiss this time? Absolutely spot on. <laughs> When you're playing well, that's the sort of thing that happens. And Sean now sits there and wonders if this Betway UK Championship has just slipped completely away from him. Can he get the correct side of the blue this time? Just about. So evenly matched these two players, but uh, 39. It looks as if Mark Selby's going to be the victor here. Eleven <coughs> wins each, and 40. I've had three draws, believe it or not. That was the Premier League where they shared the frames, four frames each. There hasn't been a great deal between them this afternoon, but the scoreline is the important part of the match. Mark Selby has won the close frames. No century break. But a high standard 45. of... Match play snooker. Yeah, it's been very enjoyable. Forty six. Just about enough. Top side of the blue. Thirty five points now the lead. Too far from the winning line. Just shows you 
the mental strength of this man after that epic battle with John Higgins. And he won on the deciding frame. He's come he won. out. And he's got better as the tournament's gone on. Oh, he's overcut it. So even the world number one and current world champion suffering out there. Saw the winning post and never expected him to miss that. One. He was hoping to get the black back up onto its spot there, but it's pulled up a little bit short. Might have to uh, green ball. take the green and then just wait for a couple of shots. Needs to pull up the white. It has. It's freed the pink as well. Clever shot there. I'm sure he intended that because the red Four. was over the pocket. That was a very clever sh choice of shot from Sean Murphy there. The little triangle of reds, I think, are all covering each other. So it's far from easy. Five. Now has he got an angle? In the black. Cue ball just before the middle pocket. Lots of right hand side. Bite Widen ball. the angle and try and. Needs a cannon on these three reds. Needs a cannon. He's got it. What's it going to be like? And oh, that's unlucky. Needs a full ball cannon on him. It was a great attempt. 12. All about fractions, isn't it? He was just a fraction out of finishing perfect there. Uh, he hasn't got a natural angle to get in behind the brown here. That's why he's looking at the cushion over the other side of the table. Sean Murphy, 12. Just looking at the scoreboard there. As you can see, he's 28 ahead, but with the way the balls are situated, that doesn't really mean a great deal. Well, he's shaping up to have a go at this red. He's using the Euro red with the cue ball. Come back down the table. This could go anywhere. Okay, Sean has a possible pot into this bottom right hand corner pocket. I'm sure the red doesn't pass the green. But this could have been a lot easier. He's had a big slice of luck there, Mike Selby. Yeah. The only red he can leave is the one he's taking, and I don't think he'll be going in the middle pocket near his hand if he pots this. I think he's not going to go in the middle pocket near his hand. Oh, any harder than he would. One. But still problems. The red doesn't pass the yellow. The red doesn't pass the green. He's straight on the blue. It's not easy.
And hello to viewers on BBC Two. Joining us here at a very tense time in the semi-finals of this Betway United Kingdom Championship, Sean Murphy, the world number six, under pressure. He's 5-2 behind against the world number one, Mark Selby, in this semi-final, who needs this frame, frame eight, to assure himself of a place in tomorrow's final. Now, coverage continues on BBC Two, so those of you who are watching us on BBC One, uh, please, we invite you to turn over right now to BBC Six. Two as we continue to enjoy this semi-final. It's OK. Again. Let's say a little bit lucky with the missing the double kiss, but he, he sort of played it in such a way that he was always leaving the cue ball there. He was never going to be leaving this red below the black. And okay, trusting to look to where the red he was taking on was going to go. But this is a good shot. This is a very good shot. He's got the snooker. Yeah, he thought of two shots there, Sean. He, he, he contemplated playing the red near the black to bring the pink into play and decided against that. And I think he made the right choice there, that's for sure. Oh, is the red going to bounce enough? Oh. That's a, a nice little run of the ball. You're never sure where you're going to send them. Played it very controlled, but uh, just stopped in time from Mark Selby's point of view. Similar type shot, cushioned first as he's playing here. This Barbican crowd that would love this match to continue. They've enjoyed every second of it. Packed house here, just the one table. It's been a great atmosphere, and they'd love to see a comeback. Or some of them would, that's for sure. Still looks pretty cool and calm, as he always does. Once again, just enough. That won't cut in to the left middle. It's just fascinating watching the tactical exchanges here. Mm, a little bit awkward, this situation here. I'd like to play the red on the left-hand side, but Bridging over that brown just makes it a bit more difficult. He's got to cover this red, and that doesn't look like he has the pace, and that was always the problem. Well, the last thing he wanted to do was leave it short anywhere further up the table, and this red wouldn't cut. Now he can cut the red. He may can in the pink out, but if he drops on the colour, it could be the end of match for Sean. He knows it. In fact, he could avoid cannon the pink, but he hasn't played One. it too well. He didn't want to bring the pink into play, but he could have made a better job of the position. Oh. Twenty-three, the difference. <laughs> <laughs> he only needs the black and the red. This will test the nerve ends. I don't think he's going to refuse this black, Dennis. Drop it in. 
He's bought a lot of pressure balls already in this match. Great shot. He's on the red. Kept his head so still. Eight. The red for a place in tomorrow's final. Nine. Oh, you can see what it means to Mark Selby. A little bit of a fist pump there. He knows that he had a tough match on his hands against Sean Murphy. I think the scoreline probably doesn't reflect the match. It was a bit closer than that, but look at that. 40. That's what it means to the current world number one and world champion. 60. As I mentioned, he's won this great title in 2012. He'd love to win another one and matches two world titles. 19. But every credit to Sean Murphy. Just a couple of frames, close frames that he could have won, went to the Leicester man. Twenty-eight. Finishing in style here. The crowd have thoroughly enjoyed this match. Fantastic atmosphere here. The, both players got terrific 34. reception when they were introduced into the Barbican. But in the end, it may look a very comfortable victory. It wasn't quite as easy as it looked. But Mark Selby was just a little bit too classy in the end. And he beats his good friend Sean Murphy by 6-2 and goes through to the final. Well played, both players. And here he comes. Congratulations. You did it. Back into this UK final. We've just been talking about how you were able to capitalise on, on Sean's mistakes, possibly a little bit more than he was able to punish you. Was that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't think it was a fantastic game. It was probably a better game before the interval than after the interval. But uh, I felt OK out there. I felt I was creating the chances. And then sometimes, like, before the interval, I was taking them. And then after the interval, I kept getting to, like, match ball or something or frame ball, and I kept throwing a twitching here and there and stuff, but that's why how it is. A couple of really big frames, frame four obviously to go 3-1 up, real steel there, and the seventh as well to go 5-2. And did you feel like you were almost over the line at that point? That was a really key moment, it seemed to us. Not really, because, I mean, Sean's probably at his most dangerous when he's backs against the wall and, and starts going for his shots. But uh, you say the, the seventh frame, I think you said, or... The fifth, uh, the first frame after the interval, I'm, like, mm -hmm. stretching over a red, like, trying to play the blue. My mind's more on about not touching the red and then I've like flicked a bit aside on the blue and even then I felt good and I thought if I could win that frame because I know it's a big frame after the interval. It seemed like the writing might be on the wall for the fact you were going to win when after you were in a very difficult snooker that you got out of you left Sean a long red into the green pocket and it's the type of shot that you, Sean usually slots in very nicely and he missed it by some way. And you sense if a player's not going to pot those, that he's on, he's on the wane. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, they're the kind of shots you, you don't expect him to miss. But I just felt as though he didn't really put a, a true strike on it. He sort of tried to float it in rather than if he probably played it a little bit firmer, stunned on, off, on and off the cushion, he probably gets more of a, a commit, commitment to the shot and, that's, that's and probably pots it. That's funny, that shot. We were sitting there, think, saying in the studio, watching on the television, that he banged it a bit. And that's strange how you've then come in and said you didn't think he hit really? it hard. Yeah, yeah, that's weird, yeah, isn't yeah. it? I don't know. I, I mean, did, obviously, I he did like, play off the cushion, yeah. You know, did he? I, I, I thought you thought he'd play into I, open space. I thought the exact opposite to you. I thought he was going to fall. That's why you've won seven. Well, <laughs> <and> I've won <laughs> two. <laughs> but you're going for another UK crown here, Mark. And you know, we look back to earlier in your campaign here in York and against Daniel Wells, there was an interesting difference of opinion as to. Rubbish, uh, wasn't it? <laughs> you, said, you said he was rubbish, and you kind of concurred at that point. But I, I'm going back to six months almost to to the World Championship, and I remember when you won the world title again. You weren't happy with your A game. It, it didn't surface as often as you'd wanted to. Is it beginning to do that more effectively and more often right now? Are you in better stroke now? Uh, yes and no, really. I mean, obviously, I'm my own worst critic. I'm always trying to look for perfection. And even if I'm winning tournaments, sometimes I can go back to the practice table and start tweaking things and trying to get that perfect cue action, which probably don't exist. I mean, you look at the, the greats, John Egan's and stuff, sometimes they're still queuing across balls and such. But... When I just get on with it and play a little bit quicker, I seem to, to get all them demons out of my head, so that's probably what I need to do. 
And in terms of your performances since then, you've made seven centuries, none today, but at the same time... Well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. It was a tough match, obviously. But, you know, in terms of, of your break building, we've often admired that. And do you feel that's coming more easily and more fluently again? The last couple of games, I felt like, even whether it has made centuries or not, I felt in myself that it was coming, apart from the last break there to try and get over the line. It was on the lasso. I was up and down the table <laughs> everywhere. But, uh, yeah, I mean, from the, probably the Milkins game, I felt as though I was sort of picking up as it went along. Obviously, today wasn't a fantastic game, but it's always going to be a tough match playing one of your, your good friends on the tour as well. Yeah. Last time he was in a final, you uh, destroyed Ding in, uh, in China. And um, you're in another final now. The possibilities of doing the double, the big two. Yeah, that'd be nice. I mean, I, I wasn't even really thinking about that until I was practising before the start of the semi-final. And I heard on the BBC that you mentioned that, and then it sort of inspired you a bit. Not that you needed inspiring anyway to get to the final, but sort of geared you on a bit more. Exactly. I mean, you'd be joining a very, very illustrious list of people. And I was actually just chatting away with these guys about how difficult it is to do that in a calendar year world and UK title. What, what's your, your feeling about why it is such a big hurdle to cross to get there? What, to win both, to win both the of them in the, in the same calendar year, yeah. I mean, obviously, to win the World Championships a tough tournament anyway, over two weeks with a long format you need to be playing on your game from start to finish more times than not. Uh, UK, very, very s similar. I mean, f up to a few years ago, it used to be a long format, first to nines. Now they've cut it down a little bit. So I think that's even tougher by cutting it down a little bit because sort of like the lower ranked players, it gives them a better chance to obviously compete against the top players with it being such a short race. OK, well, uh, interesting to get your thoughts and you're still very much on track for it, Mark. And mm. we're going to find out who you'll be playing uh, very shortly. Congratulations, Thank get you. some rest. And we'll see you in the final tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you.